I'm so happy that uh, 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 Mary's meal exists. I'm really happy because knowing Blessed Mary, staying with her so many years, I learned how mother she is, how much she loves us, how much she suffering because of us. And I'm so happy and I am sure that she's smiling when she looking Mary's meal because they help him helping for those who are really, really need. I think Mary's Meals is of huge importance to the world today and the simplicity of Mary's Meals is what makes it so beautiful. That simple thing of providing one meal every day in a place of education for the hungry child so that you meet the, the immediate need of that child for food but at the same time you, you tackle the underlying cause of poverty by enabling them to come into the classroom where they can get that education that can, can set them free. What we all need as human beings today is to see love in action and I think everybody of goodwill in this world has a heart that responds to that. And I think the beauty of Mary's Meals is that it touches everybody's heart, both the person who receives what Mary's Meals can give and the people who get involved in the giving. I think it's such an amazing source of hope because it's so easy to feel overwhelmed by the poverty that we see in our world, the, the, the hunger that we see so many suffering from. But Mary's Meals gives all of us a means of responding. After the earthquake, I didn't know if the school was okay. Everybody wanted to have food and water, but they couldn't. I heard about Mary's Meals again, and I said, oh, Mary's Meals keeps standing. Mary's Meals still existing. I think with Mary's Meals, it's more about service work being of service. It's a partnership between Mary's Meals and the community. Mary's Meals will provide the food, but the community has to um, start the garden and build the kitchen. They provide the volunteers, so the mothers come in and they cook the food. And you know, and, and what happens is it really energizes and, and, and motivates the, the community to start working together and to appreciate that, that partnership. We've noticed a very great significant change in the lives of our people. We've noticed there has been a reduction in the drop of bread of our kids. Before uh, leaving uh, your house, for coming to school, you're thinking about how am I going to get food in the school? That will refrain you to learn better, to, to listen to the teacher, because you're, you're thinking about having food. You go to school and we still have influence from various means, and that's a very, very good grace from the God, and from the persons who, who was thinking about us, after the earthquake from food and water. This is way more than a, than a feeding and education program. This impacts people in such a massive way. Uh, a lot of them, they didn't eat at all in a day before they came to school. Now they're motivated to come to school. They're motivated to be part of that community. They, they eat, they can focus. They don't need to run away and scavenge at lunch or, or they're falling asleep in class, you know. And now when you speak to them, they're saying, I want to be a a doctor, a lawyer, this, they, you know, education suddenly becomes like a possibility. I just want to thank Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, who brought up a child in poverty, who knew what it was to be exiled, uh, to thank her for her uh, inspiration and, and love. It is an amazing thing to think that today, uh, well over one million children uh, or eating Mary's meals every day. You know, I think what Magnus has achieved here is not, he's not walked an easy path. Um, you know, it's involved a lot of surrendering a huge amount of faith, which is really how he operates. And he's just relied on so much hard work and determination, but then leaving the rest up to faith. And through that faith, you see what is opened up in front of him, which I think when you, when you come here, you realize it's, it's, it's quite hard to fathom that, that you know, just how, how quickly this has grown and, and to what extent. 
maybe yeah. this is all the works mm -hmm. of Blessed Mary. Mm -hmm. She invites you here like teenagers, yes. that she learned you what is important in the life, that she yeah. put in your heart these things. Mm -hmm. And after with prayer you understand yeah. that you want Mary's meal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You must have seen so many amazing things happen here. Yes, all every these day. Years. Every yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, people telling me things of what they never think that they can be. Yes. And they're happening here in Medjugorje. Yes, yeah. Uh, because she she walking here. Ljubav. I radost. Biti aktivni. To su sve neke evo, riječi koje me asociraju odmah na naredne obruke. A, živjeti evanđelje. To isto. Živjeti evanđelje. Konkretno. To su Marijine obroci za mnom. I grew up here at, at Craig Lodge. It was uh, our, our family home. And uh, in the early 80s, as a teenager, I went with my brothers and sisters to to Medjugorje and, and it really changed our lives uh, in, in lots of different ways. I remember just um, opening our family newspaper which was at that time the Glasgow Herald and my eye just fell on this little snippet of news which said that there were reports that the Virgin Mary was appearing to six children in Yugoslavia as it was then. I remember really clearly just uh, a huge excitement and then very quickly, just a, a really strong desire to find out more and to, to go there too. I remember that it was a great adventure, but always there was this um, sense of, I think, discovering something. And when we got there, it just, I think, confirmed all those kind of hopes and dreams that yes, it was absolutely true that in our day, uh, at this time, Our Lady was, was appearing to us. They, they came back different people. They came back really imbued, which we rec recognize now as that wonderful spirit of prayer that emanates from Medjugorje. And we were actually bowled over by they, by our children actually telling us, you know, Mum and Dad, you ought to be praying more. And we say, yes, yes, yes. And then they said, yes, and you ought to be fasting. We said, come and give it a break, you know. But it was really incredible. And it really impinged on us that, that this conversion was so profound and so strong in such a short time. So we went out a couple of months later as a small group. None of us really saw any incredible phenomena of any kind, but it was the grace of knowing that our Blessed Mother was with us and the grace of knowing um, that, that our whole life in some very subtle way was going to change. We knew from that very first visit that uh, there was going to be a fundamental change in our life and all that we had to do was to trust our Blessed Mother and to, um, to do God's will on a day-to-day -day basis and it would unfold for us what exactly she had planned. We got the conviction that Our Lady was asking us to change our lives totally and to dedicate our lives to young people and so it was a couple of years after we'd been to Medjugorje that we finally opened Craig Lodge as a house of prayer. And that was a wonderful thing, a huge gift for us. All these amazing people started to, to come into our home. Um, and at times a little bit uncomfortable as well. What had been our cosy family home, suddenly all these people were coming in and out. You know, some people say to us, well, you made such a sacrifice doing what you've done, you know, letting your house become a house of prayer. I personally never felt any real concern that it was going to be difficult. God was very kind, I think he probably blanked my mind. It's the story of a conversion of a family. So Magnus grew up in this very generous way of life that Our Lady gives, like the people here. They open their houses and you have children live with pilgrims. They grow up with pilgrims and they, he did the same because the house of prayer in Scotland is like a mini Medjugorje. People come and the family hosts them and they're very generous. They really give a lot of themselves, of time and of heart and everything. But it, it really, more than anything, was it was a blessing and really uh, probably learned so much watching mum and dad open their, 
their homes and their, their hearts, I suppose, their, their lives to, to invite people in because they wanted to help people, especially young people. I probably didn't realise it then, but I suppose I learned a lot through, through that witness that um, mum and dad gave. And then, you know, the years went by and, and the, the, the war began in, in Bosnia and that, that was a horrible thing for all of us, something we never could have imagined uh, when we were going to Medjugorje in those early days to this beautiful, peaceful uh, place. I think there was a particular sorrow in our hearts because it was a place that had um, that meant so much to us. It was where Medjugorje was. I think we began to realise the enormity, perhaps, of Our, our Lady's plan here. Our Lady, when she comes to Medjugorje, she calls herself Our Lady Queen of Peace. And it seemed ironical when we were watching these ghastly pictures um, that Our Lady, in a way, had been preparing us for this and begging us to pray for peace in our hearts and in the world. And here we were in the midst of this very cruel war. Um, so the response that, uh, that we had was, what can we do? What can we do to help? And we felt very much personally involved with it. And one, one particular evening, my, my brother Fergus and I, we watched this news bulletin and it was a report about how refugees were suffering in a place very close to Medjugorje. And I suppose for that reason, we felt particularly moved and we began talking about the idea of trying to do something small to, to help. Um, and that led to all of us launching a little, just a very little appeal, asking people for basic things, for food, for clothing. Um, and all this stuff started to come, come in here. And um, I asked my dad if we could borrow, borrow his shed um, to store these gifts that were coming in. And, uh, and somebody gave us an old Land Rover and we loaded that up and then we drove the, the Land Rover to a refugee camp near Medjugorje. And that was the beginning of an incredible saga. But we, as usual, didn't realise that it was the beginning of a huge, long story of mercy. I suppose I came home after that week thinking that I'd done my good deed and that it would be back to work as normal. Um, but God had a very different plan because when I came back home here, I found this mountain of food and clothing piled up here and continuing to pour in. So at that point I, I prayed about it and I thought about it and I, I decided to give up my job um, and I sold my, my house at that time uh, and somebody gave me a truck and I just simply began driving back and forth uh, to, to Bosnia. Then over the years our work began to evolve. Uh, we began to get involved in building homes for abandoned children in Romania health clinics for people in Liberia during their terrible civil war. Lots of different things but no real um, theme or focus to our work. The horror of the war has brought life in other areas, you see, so it's all very mysterious. And then in 2002 we were beginning to, to read reports about this terrible famine that was um, afflicting Malawi. and. Um, it moved us very much and we were very um, anxious to be able to respond in some way. But we didn't have any um, contact that we knew of within Malawi and the way we'd been working up until that point was always through somebody we knew. But Malawi we hadn't had any previous connection with. And then we were, we were talking about it one day in the office and we suddenly remembered all those years ago how this lady, Gay Russell, had been in touch um, after our first trip to Medjugorje asking for more information. After the children came back from that first pilgrimage to Medjugorje, um, they, uh, Ruth decided to write this article. She was back from university at the time and she wrote the article and then at the bottom of the article she just said, and anybody wanting any more information, write and then gave our address. And to our amazement and horror in some ways, I think we had over 700 or 800 letters came within three or four weeks from all over the world. Um, 
people desperate to know what was happening and uh, the message, what was she saying? And one of the people that kept writing to us was this lady from Malawi, which turned out her name was Gay Russell. She explained that she was, uh, uh, that she worked as, a, as an airline pilot. And she, by this time we'd got like a little basic leaflet printed up that explained about Medjugorje and its message. For months she kept asking us for 500 um, of these leaflets at a time. And we had this family joke that she must be going up above the forests of Malawi and just throwing them out of her aeroplane because she was a pilot. And then we, we, like so many other people, kind of she drifted out of our memory and years must have gone by without any other contact. And during that, that year of 2002, we began asking each other, who do we know in, in Malawi? Who could we work with there? And we remembered uh, Gay Russell. And we, we kind of just wondered, you know, aloud, um, was she still there? Was she still in Malawi? Was there any way, you know, that we might be able to, to track her down? And our, it was overheard, our conversation, by another um, person who was staying at Craig Lodge, a man called Tony Smith, and he suddenly piped up but I know, I know this lady, I know Gay Russell. You know, uh, an incredible thing. Uh, and he put us back in touch and said, I know Gay Russell, uh, I'm working with her in Malawi today. And it was in March of 2002 that out of the blue, I get this phone call, very quiet voice, saying, Gay, I'm sure you don't remember me. My name is Magnus MacDonald. And I could not believe it. And I said to Magnus, you have to come down here because we're building a replica of Medjugorje, the church and Christophers, and you've got to come see it. And we went to Malawi for the first time and uh, we met Gay. And it was an incredibly moving experience because she told us after re she received that letter from Mum nearly 20 years previously that she'd gone to Medjugorje herself, had an experience there that had changed her life also. And she'd started in, at that moment when Magnus and Ruth met her to actually try on her own to feed the, the starving children in her area. Um, and we began working with her and people we, that she introduced us to in, in Malawi. And helped identify the first 200 young babies that were really malnutrition. They had to choose which ones really needed the food. And that really was the very beginning of Mary's Meals in Malawi. So again, it was our mother's work. Mary's Mills and Medjugorje are totally united. Uh, the whole inspiration of Mary's Mills has come from Medjugorje. But even more than that, I feel that Our Lady chose a number of us just to be the, the cogs that get the whole thing going together. Even now, all these years later, I, I never lose a sense of surprise that this has happened. It was never our intention. It was, ne it was never something we planned. Um, and I never lose that sense of surprise and that sense of really profound gratitude to God that, that, that he's given me this opportunity to do this. As far as I'm concerned, I think Our Lady is giving us the direction um, and encouraging us to walk this path of holiness and the fruits of our lives are the fruits of, the, of Medjugorje, it's the fruits of uh, our Blessed Mother being allowed to, to be with us over these years and you see these beautiful fruits around the world from her presence. Its source is Medjugorje, absolutely, clearly, and wanting to respond to Our Lady's call to holiness there. Um, and we didn't plan it and God has been very gentle with us and it's unfolded step by step very, very gently. And meanwhile, this incredible movement of love began to grow around the world. Lots and lots of people, again, from lots of different cultures and backgrounds and people of different faiths and different circumstances began sharing what they had um, so that children might eat. Medjugorje Freunde sind in verschiedenen Ländern aktiv geworden. Sie wollen, wie es in der Botschaft heißt, ausgebreitete Arme der Gospel sein. Nahrung, wo Hunger ist, und Liebe, wo Hass. Mary Smills, also, helps 
ljudima, svim ljudima cijelog svijeta, bez obzira na vjeru, bez obzira na naciju, upravo tako je Majka Terezija svjedočila kršćanstvo. Nikad ne govoreći o Isusu riječima. When I think about these meals around the world, I just think about it like a, a series of lots and lots of little acts of love. None of us doing anything spectacular. It's only when you put all those little things together it's creating this, this incredible thing, this thing that really is changing the world. In my neighbors, uh, I always clean the streets and teach other kids who, does, who don't have possibility to go to school. But this is a little thing, but in the future I would like to do more because I think that uh, if I have possibility to study, I would have possibility to, to give what I study to other persons. This is what I would like to do in the future. So I, I first remember meeting Jimmy just after the the earthquake in, in Haiti. Uh, I spent a, a day with him then. He was in, in high school, just at the end of high school. And I just remember being so moved by this young man, even amidst that poverty, he grew up in the very worst part of the most dangerous slum in, in Haiti. City Soleil actually uh, was known at, at one time as being the most dangerous slum in, in the world. It was dangerous because there's a lot of hunger. In that place, everything that someone can become is a gangster. So I had a great chance to be a gangster too. But fortunately, I found amusements and I found education. I found food. So I am now started to have a new dream and realize that I can become someone, something good than becoming something bad. But in that place, people would make pancake out of mud and sugar and butter. I didn't have that chance to eat that mud because I found Meryl's Mills. And Meryl's Mills feeds me for almost 12 years and make big change in my life. And, and then we had this opportunity to come back to the youth festival in Medjugorje. Um, we'd kindly been given some time on the stage and I had this idea, wouldn't it be wonderful to, to, to take Jimmy, to see if we could take him from Haiti um, for him to be this, this living witness in front of the, the crowd of people who love Mary's Meals so much. So today I'm here to make you taste the food that you plant in my country. I'm a singer, I'm not very good but we'll try to spend a good time together. To see Jimmy on that stage um, with, his, with his gifts, with his amazing talent, um, just, just Jimmy alone, just his story, would inspire me to go on uh, with, this, with this work, never mind the other million children who are being fed these meals today. C'est pas tout bagaille qu'on fait pour nous expliquer. C'est pas tout ça qu'on fait tout qui mérite pour cacher. C'est pas tout ça qu'on tente de créer ou de comprendre. Dans l'histoire, on ne peut pas faire secret, on ne peut pas parler. On ne peut pas comment on fait pour faire ça, mais on ne peut pas plaisir. Si les garçons, même gens avec nous, si les sont filles. Pendant qu'on s'y trouve, mes igrènes, même pour me plaisir. On ne peut pas faire des ongles, c'est celle que j'aime préserver pour lui. Li pa gan pil pou wel si zbranj selman devan toul Kon jan moul le ti pwet yo poul Bam yo son ki koul Le map man yel yon mem an bal Le yon mem nan koul Ba ka met men nan poch vol dwat nan devan toul Paten avon m lave jem Dwet nan devan toul Vidim pa nan manje map Dwet nan devan toul Aswe pa nan dobi map Dwet nan devan toul Dwet nan devan toul Dwet nan devan toul Dwet nan devan toul meal for me it's one beautiful things that you showing your faith with this mm -hmm. faith is love yeah. and if you have faith you have love yeah. and you want to make another people happy ich freue mich dass Mary's Meal heute unter uns sind dieses wunderbare Werk das in Medjugorje entstanden ist und das täglich über eine Million Kinder Nahrung gibt einen Applaus for Mary's Meals. Mm -hmm. 
And, and I hope very much today that, that this amazing thing that is Mary's Meals, I, I hope it is a, another sign that, that points people back to, to, to Jesus, uh, that, that helps people understand um, the mercy of, of God. Um, and maybe in some cases points people to, to Medjugorje for the first time uh, as well and makes them think about how to. Ali ne vidim. Imat ćete oči, ali nećete vidjeti kaže Isus. Imat ćete uši, nećete čuti. Ja, to je to. Sve dok do, do jednog trenutka kad se probudi to nešto u nama. Dakle, evo, Bogu hvala da se u Magnusu i njegovim suradnicima to dogodilo i nadam se da će u nama svima o mnogima, evo, nadam se na, na temelju iskustva njihova, da će se u mnogima drugima dogoditi to, da će se provoditi duh. Hunger und seine Folgen zählen heute, wie wir alle wissen, noch vor HIV, Malaria und Tuberkulose zu den häufigsten Todesursachen weltweit. I will pray for Mary's meal that you can do what you, what Blessed Mary want from you, what God want from you, because everything what happening is God's will. And I ask you with all my heart, continue to do this, be strong. Because here in Medjugorje, you know that uh, every second day of each month, Blessed Mary giving us messages and she telling us to be apostles of love. Mary Smeal is Apostles of Love.